I'm gonna show you the exact process you need to follow to learn grammar with stories. And if you follow this process, whatever angst or frustration you feel around grammar will disappear. Not overnight and not without some frustration and some effort along the way, but you will end up understanding grammar the same way that a native speaker does. And what more could you wish for? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Ollie Richards, and as the creator of the story learning method, this deep dive into learning grammar with stories is something I've been looking forward to doing for a very long time. So let's get to it. Is it possible to learn the grammar of a language just through stories? Now, the biggest problem with this topic and this question is the phrase itself, learn grammar. Because learn grammar, it doesn't mean what you think it means. And so we have to start here by getting the main issues out on the table. And here are the main issues. First of all, it's understanding. And I don't mean understanding the grammar, I mean understanding whatever it is that you're reading or listening to, which is the whole point of learning, right? Next, it is recognizing grammar when it's there. Third, it is learning that grammar so that you understand what's going on. And then only lastly, in the fourth step, do we get to actually producing the grammar, which is where you're able to actually speak the language with accurate grammar, which is kind of the, if what you want, right? But it's it's the end game. The trouble is that all of this gets bundled together into this one phrase, learn grammar. So do you have to learn grammar with rules the way that we're used to at school? Do you need to? Look, clearly the answer to this is no, you don't have to. And the reason we know this is because native speakers don't learn the grammar of their language with rules. Now, you can argue that we as adults don't learn like native speakers, and that's true, but it's also objectively true that the only group of people who speak with perfect grammar with a 100% success rate don't learn grammar with rules. And so for this reason, the whole paradigm that we're used to of learn grammar with rules, teach grammar with rules, it has to be challenged. We've got to break that paradigm. And this can be a bit of a bitter pill to swallow if you're newer to this, but if we start from first principles. We ask the question like, why are we teaching grammar through rules in the first place? I mean, actually, why? Why are we using rules to teach grammar? Because remember, grammar rules are artificial. The language came first. Rules only came later when people felt the need to extrapolate this to teach it. The only reason that grammar in rules is what we do is because it's the only way that a mass education system works because it breaks everything down into something that can be systematized and taught at scale. That is the only reason that grammar rules as such exist. But once you take yourself out of the education system and then you take responsibility of your own learning, there's absolutely no reason for you to be constrained by that dogma of learning grammar through rules. So my main contention here in this video is that the process of learning a language through stories, and for stories here, you can substitute any kind of input, any kind of comprehensible, compelling input. The process of learning through stories most closely mimics how native speakers learn their own language. Learning through stories most closely mimics that process that native speakers go through. Now your objection here is adults cannot learn the way that kids do. An adult learning a foreign language cannot learn a language the way that a native speaker kid does. And that is true. I give you that, I grant you that, but that does not mean that the solution is to go running back to textbooks. Instead, what we need to do is to stick with the principle that input through stories or whatever else is natural learning. And from that, then we have to find a way to make it work for us as adults. We do not want to be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So let's just revisit the main components here that we talked about. First of all, we've got understanding the thing that you're reading or listening to. Then you've got noticing that there is grammar there that is kind of happening and existing. Then you've got learning that grammar, figuring out what's going on. And then lastly, we've got producing that grammar so you can actually speak it. And so, you know, when we say the phrase learn grammar, what we kind of, that's kind of shorthand for saying speaking with perfect grammar, right? But remember that is the very end of a long process. And before you can speak with perfect grammar, you first got to have a native-like understanding of grammar. And the reason that stories are so effective at teaching grammar is because the aim of stories is not to get you to produce grammar perfectly. It's not that. It's because it gives you a way 
Stories give you a way to understand and process grammar like a native speaker. So let's get into these four sections. First of all, we've got understanding the message. Now remembering, remember, we're not talking about understanding the grammar. This is understanding the message or the meaning of whatever it is you're reading. So for example, if you're reading a sentence in a book, you're reading a book, you're reading a sentence, what does that sentence mean? I'm not talking about the grammar, just the meaning of a sentence. Think about this. This English sentence, quasi-English sentence. Tomorrow I go shop, buy food. I, no money, hope everything cheap. Right, in that sentence, there's zero grammar, but you still understand the meaning, don't you? You understand what I was getting across. Why? Because 95% of meaning, give or take, is conveyed not through grammar, but through what's called lexis, through vocabulary. It's the words that tell us most stuff, it's not the grammar. Now this is important because we tend to fixate over grammar, but grammar is not that important in getting the message across. So what does this mean? This means at a very fundamental level, we are capable of understanding an awful lot in a foreign language without knowing any grammar. So this is our starting point. We've got to get it in proportion here. And this is why rule number nine of story learning is focus on the plot because it gets you doing what is important, which is understanding what's going on, not fixating on the grammar. So that's the first part. The second part here is noticing, noticing grammar. So what happens at this stage is that as you read, you start to notice that there is grammar happening. Things are changing. In, in, in any language, you've got lots of grammar. You've got different tenses. You've got verb conjugations. You've got prepositions, cases. And you know, if you're someone who's learning like a Slavic language, for example, you may well be thinking, well, my language is more complicated than everyone else's. There's far more grammar. So there's a lot there, right? So how can you just learn all this stuff from context? You know, a word, depending on the language, might be twisted in a hundred different ways, depending on a, a tense or a case. And to make matters worse, often when you're reading, you might not even know what a word means the first time you see it, you know, not even to mention the grammar that's going on. It can feel very overwhelming. But the key here is that there's no rush. There is no pressure. I know that people are gonna to wanna to punch me in the face for saying this, but a large part of your success here with language learning and with grammar is simply not to let grammar become too big a deal in your mind. If you let it, you'll think about nothing else but grammar. And we well, see one of the advantages of having a language learning business like I do is that I come into contact with thousands and thousands of students, most of whom kind of come to me thinking, grammar's too hard, grammar's so hard, I can't. But grammar's not the point. You'll let it become your all if you have the opportunity to. So the point here is that your job is simply to continue enjoying whatever it is that you're reading or listening to or whatever. You focus on the plot. Because remember, you can understand a lot with no grammar. So let's just keep our priorities straight as we go through this video, okay? And so as you read, you will start to notice things that are happening with grammar. So if you're learning French, for example, you might notice that the verb aller, which means to go, starts changing and shifting. You have aller with a Z and then allier, and there's a bunch more permutations of this as well. So as you read, so you're reading a book of short stories in French, you'll notice that these things are going on. And notice is the key word here. You don't have to understand it. You don't need to know why it's changing. What you need to do is to bring your natural curiosity to the behavior of the grammar. So ask yourself these questions. Does a verb ending change, like the French example we just saw? Is there a certain preposition with a certain verb? Like in Italian, for example, pensare di andare di, that comes with the pensare. Is there always a certain preposition that comes with a verb? Like, is that, is that a pattern? Is word order changing? Is that verb moving around different parts of the sentence? What you're trying to do with all this noticing is to shine a giant floodlight on the entirety of the language, just to illuminate it and then be open to what you find there. And then while you're doing that, if you do enough of it, your brain will start to spot patterns by seeing different grammar over and over again. And this is exactly what I did in my Italian project where I learned Italian and for the first month I did nothing but read simple stories in Italian. And then what happened was when I came to have my very first speaking session with Martina in the language in Italian, what happened was she was really amazed that I was able to speak and get a lot of 
but almost all of my prepositions correct. And this is a notoriously difficult thing in Italian because prepositions are really kind of arbitrary and you've got to learn which ones go with which verbs. And then, you know, some people said, well, that's probably that's because you have some knowledge of Spanish already. But the opposite is true because Spanish would actually interfere with getting these prepositions right because they are different in Italian. Point was that I was able to, just from reading stories, learn all of these prepositions and get them accurate. And this happened because I was open to just flooding my brain with the language by reading every day and letting my brain take it in. This is how you get to the point where certain things start to quote unquote sound right. This is an a something that so many people are aiming for in language learning. How do I get to a point where I don't have to translate, I don't have to think, things just sound right? Well, this is the process. It's lots of reading and then beginning gradually to notice the grammar that's being used. Some languages will take more time. That's unavoidable, it's just part of the game. Remember though, it takes a native speaker child over a decade to perfect their grammar after all. So number three, we move on to learn. Now, I know that I'm already starting to lose you at this point, that there's kind of a belief problem here, isn't there? How can you learn this stuff with no rules? It can't just be as easy as you're saying, Ollie. And if this is what you're thinking, then do me a favor, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to let me know that you're still here and you're gonna to commit to watching this through to try and understand this, because this is where it gets really interesting. Look, the reason that I harp on about stay away from the rules. It's it's not because I'm just going out of my way to be too dogmatic about this. It's to try and redress the balance. People spend far too long on grammar rules and nowhere near enough time on input. But listen, I'm a realist and I do believe that there is a place for deliberate study on top of your reading. So here's how. What happens is as you read, you gain confidence. And as you gain confidence, you then have the kind of mental space to start to notice grammar. And as you notice that grammar, you then become curious. So you know, why is that verb changing all the time? So there is a very logical next step, which is to start to look up grammar rules in your textbook. So why does aller change to aller and allier? What, what's going on? Well, simply you look up that thing, whatever it is, whatever you're curious about in your grammar book and you see what's going on. But the point here is to satisfy your curiosity based on your reading. That's the point of reading comes first and then you satisfy your curiosity from the grammar afterwards. It is not what everyone else does, which is to start with the textbook and use that to direct and control what you learn. So the process we're talking about here is read a lot, notice grammar, look it up. That's it. When you look up a rule that you really want to know, it's like lifting a veil on the grammar. It just unlocks your understanding, raises your consciousness. You're trying to optimize for natural input-based learning, just like kids, while also juicing it just a little by topping up your knowledge from the textbooks, which kids can't do when you become curious. Now you can do some grammar exercises if you want. After all, books are full of all that stuff. If you feel like it, you can do it. If you like that sort of thing, but it's vital to remember that once you know what's going on with the rule, once you have an awareness of that grammar rule, the mastery that you're looking for of that grammar will not come from doing a hundred different exercises. It will come from continuing to read and then noticing that rule in action, in context, in your reading. It's far better to keep reading a whole ton and see that grammar in action a thousand times than it is to do a thousand gap fill exercises in your textbook. And this is exactly how my Uncovered courses work. These are Beginner courses, by the way. The point is, in, in these courses, you spend most of your time reading the story, but then you have some video lessons that just kind of come in and help you notice and uncover bits of grammar that you've seen in the story, just to kind of elevate your consciousness. So you know, I practice what I preach here, and this is the, the principle at work. So where are we at now then? Well, we've read a lot, we've noticed grammar, we've looked it up in our books, so we have an understanding of the rules. The last stage then is to produce, to speak with accurate grammar. And at this point, you're gonna be thinking, well, it seems possible that someone could understand grammar but not be able to use it without deliberate practice. So what is that next step? How do you bridge that gap from understanding grammar to actually producing it? And that's what you wanna know. I know it. that's why you are here. But before we cover this, let me know down in the comments, what is the number one thing you've taken from this video so far? Or perhaps the number one objection? Go ahead and let me know. Now. I wanna give you some specific things you can do here to bridge the gap from recognizing grammar to producing it is 
indeed, I believe, with deliberate practice. So here are some of those things. First of all, in your speaking sessions, and if you want to speak with perfect grammar, you've got to speak a lot. You know, it gets often forgotten. In your speaking sessions, what do you talk about? Well, recycle the topics that you've been reading about. So if you've been reading a story from a book, take that story into your session with your teacher and say, right, I want to talk about this story. I want to tell you what happens. And what you're doing here is you're recycling topics that you've been reading about, and this helps you to use the grammar that you've been reading and noticing in your stories. So you've got a nice line there from, from this kind of input, from taking it in and noticing it to actually using it. That's going to help speed things up. Next, there's a wonderful activity, one of my favorites, it's called reverse translation. And there's a video about it that I'll link to uh, up here that can that you can look at. But this is going to be a very intense, very difficult exercise that forces you to produce in the language. That's what's useful about this particular one. Next, you have closed flashcards, which I'm not a great fan of. I find that the time to make them just becomes, you end up spending more time making them than you do actually using them. But a lot of people do like these. And this is where you would take a sentence and remove the grammar from the sentence so you can test yourself on it later. So for example, if you take the, a phrase, a sentence, uh, if he had gone to the shops, I would know about it. Quite a complex phrase grammatically, right? It's a conditional phrase. If he'd gone to the shops, I would know about it. And so what you can do is remove the grammar. Uh, you remove the had gone and the would know from the sentence and then put blanks there in your flashcards. And then later on, you can kind of test yourself by showing the blanks and then you have to try and remember what the complete grammar is that goes in there. A lot of people do that. The kind of point we're talking about here as well, this is the next thing at, at a kind of intermediate, upper intermediate level. This is where having a good teacher and working with a good teacher can really pay dividends. It is mostly at higher levels that this comes into play. This is where you've learned a bunch of grammar, but you're still got, you've still got these fossilized mistakes. And a good teacher at this point can really help you just kind of just point out where you've got grammar mistakes in your speaking and then to help you just correct them and steer you on the right course. A very good teacher can be great for this. Lastly, another kind of production, not speaking, but writing can be very helpful because it just gives you, it's like speaking, but in slow motion when you've got time to think. So a lot of people find that writing journals can be very helpful and then getting corrected on those journals. So you could write a journal and then give it to your teacher to correct and point out grammar mistakes. These five things are very, very powerful exercises that can help to bridge the gap from recognizing grammar to actually being able to produce it. And they all help to just raise awareness of your various grammar weaknesses. But, and this is so important, what I've just given you can help, but the truth is it's really not all that important. The big picture here, in order to achieve this, what you want, which is to be able to speak with accurate grammar. The big picture is that your overall language knowledge is growing with all the reading that you're doing. It's like a rising tide. All you really need to do is to keep just unlocking various grammar boxes as you go. But most people who get frustrated about this have simply not done enough of the groundwork. They have not had anywhere near enough input. They haven't spent anywhere near enough time reading or even speaking freely at length. So you've got to be honest with yourself here. It's a little bit like a, a doctor studies internal medicine for seven years at school, learning everything that could possibly go wrong. But it's only once she's out in the real world, kind of meeting patients, seeing how problems present in reality, that she learns to really use her knowledge and develops confidence in her own ability as a doctor. And it's like the same thing with grammar. You've got to get out there and speak your language a lot with real people for a long time. And what happens is uh, when you do that, you kind of get this constant back and forth. You try to express something in the language with some grammar. It comes out wrong. You get corrected. You think about it later and realize what you did wrong. It's a constant back and forth, almost like a battle. But this is the reality of how grammar is learned and mastered. It's by using it. And once you've learned a language this way, you know this to be true. And I think that, you know, when polyglots often talk about grammar, it's in this kind of rather nebulous philosophical way that I, I know I'm talking about it right now, which I know can be very frustrating if you're new to language learning. So if you're looking for the real truth in amongst this forest, the real secret, it is that the time spent on input and then the time spent practicing it is really the only thing that matters. So I challenge you to try to avoid looking for the shortcuts if 
you're, you haven't yet put in that time required to learn. But look, luckily, compared to grammar, vocabulary is actually far easier to learn. And in this video, I walk you through a simple five-step process to learn vocabulary from stories. If you do this the right way, you can put words and phrases straight into your long-term memory. So click the video over here right now to see how that works.